It turns out that this power function is interesting for many reasons. So let's start exploring what some of these reasons are, starting by looking at how it works on Python Tutor. So I'm going to show you the step-by-step -step calculation of 0.9 to the power 2. Of course, the answer is 0.81. Uh, we'll see the step-by-step -step calculation on Python Tutor. So let us uh, go through this line by line. So here we are in the main. We're about to print uh, 0 0.9 to the power 2. So we're expecting to see the answer 0 0.81 printed in this text box. Of course, we have to call the power function. So the focus is going to switch from main to the power function. Uh, you notice the parameters x and n are shown as question marks because we don't yet know their values. Of course, they're going to get their values from the arguments that we passed, and that happens in the next step. So we're now inside the power function, and since n is 2, this first if condition is not true. We skip it. Uh, the second test is if n is negative, no n is positive, so we skip that and we come to the else case where we have to return this complicated expression. Here x we know is 0.9, but before we can return this overall expression we have to first figure out what this is. And this of course is a recursive call to the power function. And the arguments to this version of the power function are different. Although x remains the same, you notice that the second argument is n minus 1. Since n is 2, n minus 1 is 1. So this means that before we can complete this calculation of 0 0.9 to the power 2, we have to pause it and first figure out uh, this other call to the power function where uh, x remains 0 0.9 but n is 1. So we're now in this recursive call to the power function. Uh, here again n is uh, not 0 so we proceed. Now again we test if n is negative. Uh, that's not the case so we come to the else case and here we have to return again a complicated expression which is 0 0.9 times the result of this call to the power function. Since n is 1, this time we're going to make the recursive call with the second argument being 0. So this uh, calculation is paused until we can calculate the result of 0 0.9 to the power 0. Now here it turns out that we're in the base case. So since n is 0, we now go into this if condition and we are ready to return an answer which is 1.0. Now inside a function when we hit a return statement we immediately quit that function. We re return from that function with the answer which in this case is 1.0. But it turns out that at least at the time when I'm recording this video uh, Python Tutor seems to have a bug in it because this visualization should show that I am going to quit this function, but instead it shows in the next step that I go into this statement. Now this is not correct, uh, because as I said, as soon as we hit a return, we uh, exit the function. So this is a bug in Python, Python Tutor. Uh, if you are very interested in uh, improving Python Tutor, uh, you are actually uh, welcome to uh, look at its code in GitHub and perhaps contribute a fix. But uh, fortunately, it turns out that even though the visualization is uh, incorrect, the answer that Python Tutor returns is correct. So uh, please be aware that, that there might be some small glitches like this. Generally speaking, Python Tutor is an excellent uh, visualization tool. So this call to the power function uh, with n equal to 0 should return with the value 1. And at this point, it is just about to return. And when it returns, we are back in this calculation where we wanted to calculate 0 0.9 times the recursive call. Now we know the recursive call is 1, so we are trying to return 0 0.9 times 1, and that's 0 0.9, and that's the value that we are ready to return with in this call of the power function. So this call is also about to quit with the value 0.9, and when it finishes it, 
we are back into the uh, calculation that we had paused. We were trying to calculate 0 0.9 times this value. This value we, now, we know is 0 0.9, so the answer is 0 0.9 times 0 0.9, which is 0 0.81. And when this, value, when this instance of the power function quits and returns to main, we see 0 0.81 printed up here. So apart from showing these steps, I wanted to show this calculation on Python Tutor because you may have observed that we are doing this calculation in a very inefficient way, right? Each time this power function is called, uh, most of the effort is actually happening here on line seven where the multiplication is happening. But each time the uh, power function is called recursively, we first check if n is zero, then we check if n is negative, and only then we come down and do this actual multiplication. Now, why are we doing that? Well, we're doing that because that's the way in which the mathematical definition was presented to us. But of course, we can make a simple optimization. Just because the mathematical definition is given this way, uh, doesn't mean we have to code it up in exactly the same way. So here is an equivalent function all I have done is change the order of the conditions. Now, when we do these kinds of optimizations as programmers, we have to be super careful that the optimizations don't lead to uh, errors. Now, in this case, hopefully it is very clear to you that this is uh, going to result in exactly the same answer as before. So it does give us something faster, but not much faster. It's a modest optimization. But nevertheless, it gives you a sense of what we do as programmers. Sometimes, even very small changes like this can result in large gains in performance. But most of the time, to get large gains in performance, we have to do something quite a bit more sophisticated. So we're going to continue our exploration of the same power function in a few different dimensions in the next video.